So my presentation will be about how we took Appium to 11 platforms. So just quickly about me, my name is uh, Simon Granger. I'm from Canada. I'm actually French Canadian. Um, so I'm in test automation prime at UITV. I've been there for almost four years now. Uh, before that, I was at BlackBerry, so I was a team lead doing also automation, but for board level testing and manufacturing. It was a bit of a shift in my career, uh, moving to the testing these kind of uh, apps. Um, so uh, UITV is based out of Ottawa, Canada. So this is a picture I took uh, last week, just before coming. Actually, no, it's this from the winter. Um, but this is uh, actually the Rideau Canal, and we converted into uh, this longest skating rink in the world, uh, eight kilometers long. And uh, a funny story about this, I was telling this story to someone in London when I was uh, meeting with some customers, and his question to me was actually, but how do you freeze the water? So in case you're wondering the same thing, below zero degrees, it frees on its own. So just quick uh, uh, table of contents. So uh, first I'll just do a, a quick introduction of UI Engine 1, just to give you some context. Uh, then uh, I'll go through our journey with Appium. So from uh, zero support to uh, ended up having 11 platforms supported and all the, the pitfalls and issues that we had to, to go through. And then I'll finish with some demos. So at UITV, what we looked at was trying to simplify the uh, app development over multiple platforms. So typically what you would do is you develop for a platform once, then for the next, then for the next. And you do that all on um, different SDKs, different languages. It can become uh, quite the nightmare to, to manage and it, it becomes very expensive as well. So how we solved it is similar to uh, what the game industry did. So we created our own uh, C++ engine. And C++ being a portable language, we, we were able to port it to multiple platforms. So our SDK allows to develop apps for multiple platforms with a single code base. So we develop once, and then with a the push of a button, we deploy the packages for, for all the platforms. So although it, you can see there's different layouts depending on, on the, the platform. It's all the same code that runs beneath. So here's just a quick list of, of the different platforms that we support. And this is some of our customers. And we are focused on the TV market. So it's, it's pretty much uh, TV streaming apps that, that we focus on. So our journey with Appium. So it pretty much started this way. So when meeting with potential customers, a lot of them end up asking us if we supported a test automation framework. And actually, they specified Appium uh, itself uh, many times. So for them, it seemed like it was a mandatory checkbox uh, to be able to use our solution. So without support of Appium, it was much more difficult to convince these customers to, to join our SDK. So what we did to start was we tried to run Appium with our solution. And what we ended up seeing was it appeared as a black box. So the source tree was pretty much empty. Any one of you have an idea why that would be? because we don't use the native SDK. So every element that appears on screen is built by our engine. So because of that, uh, the native automation layer cannot uh, talk to our app and can't uh, detect the source tree. So from there, we decided to investigate a little more about Appium. And what we found, it was open source, it was scalable, and it was based off of the web driver protocol. Uh, and then just to, to break it down a little. So with Appium, you would take these different automation layers uh, and abstract them with that single uh, 
interface, which is a web browser pool, and that's done with the Appium server. So each platform uh, would have its own driver, and it would receive the web browser protocol commands and then translate it to uh, the appropriate command for that automation day. And then to write your test scripts, you have these client libraries. So, uh, which is pretty cool with Appium is you can choose multiple. So I listed three here, but there's a lot more. And you can develop your test scripts with the language of your choice. So knowing this, we decided to do this proof of concept to try to see, could we actually make it work? And the two areas we had to focus on were the uh, driver side, so an Appium server, we created our, our own driver. And on iOS, we would create our own automation layer from scratch. So to create our automation layer, the, the main things we had to focus on was, uh, first, we had to create a socket server uh, to be able to receive and send all the commands and statuses. And then we added uh, message handling uh, for all these commands. And then finally, we had to uh, add the different commands we wanted to support and then create all the hooks inside our engine. So uh, some of the commands we wanted to start with was obviously the get the source tree. And for that, we actually had to translate our scene tree uh, from the engine into XML source tree. Uh, and then our, the other command would be like find elements, click, and screen capture. On the driver side, so what we did is we looked at the existing drivers and we took basically the iOS driver, stripped it down, and started adding our stuff to it. And what we had to add here was the socket connection to our server when we establish the session. Again, the message handling, and then the same commands we had to add on the driver side. So this would be the path of our, a normal command uh, going from the test script. So it would come from uh, the client library, then to uh, the Appium server, uh, and then we would have caps actually defining that it is UI engine, so it, it would know that it's UI engine driver it needs to talk to and then they would go to our automation layer. On the way back, it would follow the same path. We did, however, find that some of the original uh, commands from the iOS driver would work with our solution. And those would be more the system level commands, like installing the app, launching it, uh, the net setting network connections, uh, key inputs, stuff like that. So what we decided to do was try to leverage those so we did this hybrid solution where when we launch a session with our driver, we actually launch a second session uh, with iOS driver. And inside our driver, we would create a list of proxy commands. And once we receive that command, if we see that it's in that list of proxy command, we would redirect it to the iOS driver. And then that one would talk to the XCUI test. On the way back, let's follow again the same path. So our proof of concept was actually a success. Um, so we were able to install and launch the app with the proxy commands, uh, interrogate the app and, and find different elements, uh, make simple interactions. We were able to click and finally get a screenshot. So with this, now we decide to go with this minimum viable product. So from that little Lego car, now we're going to this basic car, but it can still get you somewhere. Uh, so what we looked at to do this, we looked at the web driver protocol, the whole list of commands, and we created a subset, what we thought was the most valuable to start with. And for this MVP, we also wanted to support uh, Android and iOS. And for creating this commercial solution, we had to solve a lot of the issues we ignored in the POC. And this is where actually the Appium community uh, was very useful. So uh, we initially posted a question on a forum, and uh, Jonah, who's actually presenting beside us, uh, ended up giving us some direction and added us to uh, the Slack uh, workspace. And from there, uh, we were able to ask a lot of questions and get uh, help. And they, they are a very active com community, and it was instrumental to our success. Um, so we eventually got our solution ready in a matter of weeks. Uh, and everything worked well with our simple test app. When, when we decided to test it with a more complex production app, it kind of started looking like this. So uh, it didn't go as planned. So uh, we, we, we noticed there was a lot of misclicks uh, that were happening. 
uh, we had a hard time finding uh, locators for, for the elements we wanted to interact with. Uh, so during this phase, I was basically hovering between my test scripts, our driver, and our automation layer to, to try to find the, the perfect solution to, to solve all these problems. So there was a few of them that I had to solve, but I'm just going to enumerate a few uh, here. So one of them was uh, mixed clicks due to coordinates. So our definition of click that we had originally defined was to click in the center of the button. But what would happen in a scenario like this was the button is partially on screen. You, you should still be able to click on it, but uh, uh, we would send the coordinates off screen and then miss the click. So how we solved this is we added uh, five, or we added four extra uh, targets, uh, and before clicking, we actually checked to see if one of those four targets could click on it, and that would be the set of coordinates uh, we would end up using. Um, so another issue we had was the difficulty of finding unique locators. And um, so in a lot of our, our uh, apps, what we found was developers would use the same name, same, same name for class, name, and ID. And if we wanted to decorate a specific poster, uh, it, it was close to impossible. Uh, unless we use like find elements and then use an index, but we didn't want to do that. Uh, because of the way we create our source tree, it was difficult to use XPAT. But what we did do is we inspired us, uh, ourselves from XPAT and added a attribute filter uh, to all of our search strategies. And, and then with this, uh, once you wrote your selector, uh, you could append at the end between brackets your attribute name and an attribute value. And that would allow you to uh, pinpoint a much more specific element. So we eventually got uh, all our issues resolved. Uh, now our, our vehicle came, came from that Lego to that uh, Doom buggy, and now it looks a little more refined. Um, we, we ended up getting our uh, driver uh, published in Appium, uh, which uh, we didn't know would be accepted at one point because we are uh, a kind of a closed system, uh, but we were really happy uh, that we got in. And so we continued making improvements. We added new commands. We added support for having desktop. And then uh, these guys came back. So our customers then were asking, well, this is really nice that you have support for iOS and Android, but uh, you're, you're advertising that you support these 11 platforms. Uh, can I test on these? Like, it, it would be difficult uh, without that. So now, to solve this, we're going to zoom into um, our automation layer. So for each platform that we added support for our engine, um, we had to add this socket server. So for iOS, we added a socket server in Objective-C. For Android, we added one in, in Java. And then if we wanted to add for all these platforms, it would uh, be quite cumbersome, complex, and you'd have to hover between all these different uh, uh, languages and SDK. Uh, so the good news is since we had started working on Appium, inside our company uh, someone had created a TCP socket implementation uh, that uses the, the BSD TCP socket and abstracts all the system level implementation. So having this, we were able to create a socket server using that single implementation and then give us this universal socket server. And basically, that ended up opening Appium to all the platforms that our engines support. So now our vehicle migrated to this all-terrain vehicle. And the first thing we did was we said, OK, let's try running our test scripts as if seen test scripts on all the platforms. And actually, to our surprise, they ran and they passed on the first run, even on TV apps, which don't support touch. And the reason that is, is because it's all the same source code, actually, they all inherit the touch and click uh, implementation. But the problem is, or it's not the problem, that's not the way the customers want to use it, right? So in, in the real world, okay, and the one thing missing. So when we were able to run it on all the platforms, we did have to launch the app ourselves. Uh, 
so to have a fully automated solution, we have to add all these installers inside our driver to be able to uh, run it on uh, Jenkins pipeline and all that. But if there is an implementation of the driver in Appium, like there is one for Tizen that is in beta right now, uh, we could uh, piggyback on it the same way we did for iOS and Android and create this hybrid solution and then reuse this driver to, to launch it so we don't have to add it inside our driver. So now we have this single automation layer that works on 11 platforms. And because it's all the same source tree on every platform, uh, we can use the same selectors. That means, like we saw previously, is we can use the same test scripts without any modification from one platform to another. However, uh, for, for TV apps, uh, we want to change the way we navigate the app to mimic how a user really uses it, right? So in a TV app, instead of touch and, and click, it's uh, focus and then you have to press your, your remote control or uh, controller to, uh, to navigate. So we started looking at finding a way to send these keys and we kind of had a hard time uh, there was Android that supports this send key code, but we couldn't find an equivalent on iOS and even definitely not PlayStation or any other platform like that. So what we decided to do was use the, the send key command. And the send key command is actually meant to be used uh, to send uh, text into a text input field. Uh, so it's meant to send keys to a specific element. Uh, and it actually also supports keystrokes from your keyboard so you can actually send arrow keys and enter key which are navigation but it's not handled as an interrupt system level interrupt it's it's really handled inside that so since we own the automation layer we create a special case for it where if you send if you use the send keys on the parent element of your scene tree we would be able to uh, detect it on our automation layer and then uh, send it out as a uh, system level uh, keystroke. So once we did that, we actually ended up being able to, to navigate uh, as a with with the navigation keys uh, on every platform that we had uh, with our solution. So the next thing that came up was uh, React Native support. So inside our company, we decided to add this extra layer on top of our engine to give developers two options to write apps. So one was uh, C++, uh, the original one, and then React Native, which is more common in, in many of the customers that, that we work with. So we weren't sure if that would affect our automation layer, but the good news is since the automation layer is in the engine uh, and React Native is just on top, it actually worked uh, from day one. And we actually ended up making use of uh, some of React's attributes. So React has this thing called test ID that you can use when you write uh, unit tests. Uh, and you would add that to an element you want to interact with to, to, to have a more, to be able to find it more easily. Uh, so what we did is we actually published this test ID inside our source tree and we added a uh, search strategy to be able to find it. And I'll, I'll show you at the demo uh, how it works. And a cool thing with Appium is since we had moved from uh, C++, or we still are C++, but we added uh, React Native, uh, which uses JavaScript inside our company. We kind of focus now on these two languages. Uh, so what we were able to do with, with Appium is actually uh, move from using uh, the Appium Ruby lib uh, to WebDriver I.O. So we would be much more focused on the languages uh, that we want to work with. So uh, now we have this really good solution, but um, we have all this, this work to do uh, to get it to the next step. Uh, so um, 
one of the things we have to work on is uh, uh, update our driver to the W3C WebDriver protocol. So uh, I think it's been announced like over a year now, but we haven't done it. And right now we're starting to get all these deprecated warnings. Uh, so uh, that's going to be something I'm going to jump on uh, very soon. Um, the next few things were um, adding the install scripts for the remaining platform. So we added some of them in our driver already for, for some of the 11 platforms, but not all of them yet. Uh, we're, we're going slowly because we want to make a full regression on each platform once we have them uh, completely. Uh, next was WebView support. So we currently don't support WebView, uh, but our customers are using it. So we definitely want to investigate and uh, add that support. And then finally, it'd be um, adding uh, the missing appium command. So we started off with a small subset. We've been expanding it over time, um, but uh, we don't support all of them yet, and we want to eventually uh, get all that support. So uh, just a quick recap. So at UITV, we built this cross-platform engine uh, that can run on multiple platforms. We've built this automation layer that follows the engine. Uh, and a driver, and every time we add a new platform. So actually, we did add WebOS recently, and um, once we added it, I, I just went and tried one of our test scripts on it and actually ran the first time. So basically, we have no support almost to do on Appium when we add a support. It's all built into the engine, and it's, it gets ported to every platform that we add. Um, and a cool thing, actually, I worked all night trying to get this to work. But our engine actually can, we can use it to build games. So I wanted to try to get uh, a hack day project that someone did a few years ago uh, to build so I can actually show a game uh, being run with Appium. Uh, but uh, it was using an older version of the engine and I had all these build issues with it. Um, so anyway, uh, the good thing is we can use the same test scripts across all the platforms. So it makes writing uh, the test development really easy for, for, uh, for our customers. And right now we support uh, 11 platforms. So before we go to the demo, so uh, this is just a few resources. So our, our driver is open source, so it's on GitHub. Uh, go have a look. And uh, the second link is our company website. So if you are, you're curious about UI Engine and, and want to know more, uh, go have a look. And you can also ask me afterwards. So for demos. So the first one is a video. What you're seeing here on the screen right now, on the right hand side, our test suite is being executed. On the left hand side is the communication between our test cases and the Appium server. I want to point out that these test cases are platform agnostic and they do not depend on a specific platform. So we're running the suite on a tvOS right now and the main functionality of this uh, test suite is to iterate through the different posters of the app. As you can see right now, we're only testing the uh, static UI elements, the presence of the static UI elements on the app and the behavior uh, of the app and the flow that's, uh, that's going through. I want to reiterate on the fact that these test cases are platform agnostic and they do not depend on a specific platform behavior. So we're running the same suite on Tizen TV, Android Hansip, Apple Tablet, and Mac OS, all testing the same behavior and functionality. Okay. So now we're going to go to some demos. The first thing I want to show, I'll bring up something. So this is the Appium server, and okay. 
So I just want to highlight here, these are the, the capabilities that we use for things. So uh, automation name would be UI engine for us. Platform name, uh, here we're not using the uh, Mac driver, there's a Mac driver. Uh, so if we're not using it, we, we added the YI in front of, of the platform name. And, and for, to be able to connect to our socket, we need to have the IP address uh, of the device. And what's cool about it is the device, once uh, the app is on it, uh, you don't need a cable. It can be running from anywhere. So here we have just localhost because I'm going to run it on my Mac. I'm going to launch the app. So this is one of our TV apps. So uh, as we mentioned, you can navigate with keys and you can navigate with uh, gestures and clicks. Um, but what I want to show you is uh, on Appium Desktop. So you guys all know about Appium Desktop? You've, you've used it before? Yeah. yeah. I thought it was pretty cool. That was one of my hack days to actually get it running and everyone at the company were like super amazed about it. Uh, so what's cool is when you hover over things, it, it actually shows you uh, the different elements. So I'm going to go in and select one and then go and find it here. And then here you have all your attributes. Uh, here we see it's not hittable, so we, we know this is not the button. So I'm just going to go uh, one above. And now we see this is the button. So if I want to interact with it, uh, this would be it. But if I look here, I, um, I don't have a unique selector. Uh, because multiple uh, buttons are using the same class, the same name, and, and the same ID. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in the code and add a test ID. And what I'm going to do is all the posters seem to have a unique title, so I'm going to use the title as, as my, my test ID. So if I go code. I'm going to go. So this is where we, we define uh, those buttons, uh, the image that we had selected earlier. And this is where the title is. So I'm going to just take this text here. And I'm going to copy it to my button. And I'm going to rename it to test ID. And I'm going to save it. And look at the app in the background. You'll see the app just got reloaded. So now we're going to go back to uh, I've been just having there, we're going to refresh this. And now we're going to select the poster. And if I select it, now, now you see uh, our end test ID appears in our attributes. And now we have this uh, unique selector. This was, was grayed out earlier, so now I can actually interact with it. Now we have the, the poster level. Um, so next thing I wanted to show was uh, just that we can navigate with Appium. So if I swipe, I can swipe like this. And uh, if we do a key navigation, because I mentioned we can navigate with the key. So, uh, I, I mentioned we would use this sun key, right? Uh, so I'm going to go open this guy. So this, this is the Unicode characters for uh, each of these uh, navigation. For some reason, they all appear as a question mark. I don't know why. So now if I send this key, you should see the focus move from here to here. Go back. And it didn't work. Do you guys know why it's a catch? I, I did it on purpose. You didn't listen to me, right? So I said it, it had to be sent to the parent element of the whole scene tree for it to work. So now I'm going to actually select the parent, and I will send the same key. And now it moves. And just to prove we can do more, I'm just going to say press enter. And It's weird because I'm copy pasting the same thing, but it's going to do something different. And now we're inside the poster. So another thing I wanted to show was, so you're probably wondering 
how did you run your test scripts on the other platforms if you didn't have the installer? Uh, this is what I'm going to show you. We have a special platform name for that. I'm going to launch an app here. And I'm going to go back to the app in desktop. Did I close it? No. Okay. Okay. And this one is called OSX Connect App. So if I list Connect to App as my platform name, all it's going to do is it's not going to launch anything. It's just going to go and find this IP address and see if it can connect to the socket server on the, on the, the port that we've established. And if I start it, so it, now it's connected to the app that I launched myself. And the cool thing about this is, so if let me go and select an element here, and I'll select poster. And basically the reason we started this was to be able to debug our automation layer. So what I can do now is I can actually put breakpoints in my automation layer. And once I tap on it, it breaks in the code and then I can start uh, going through it and debugging. So one last thing I can show you to say. We go back to here. Uh, oh, sorry. So originally, what would happen with our source tree is we would publish everything from the scene tree. And what what happens is a lot of developers what they would do is they would load multiple screens in parallel so that the transition would be a lot faster. And what would happen is when you look at the source tree, okay, I need to click slide one. Okay, and let's refresh. you would start seeing this. So you, I'm trying to click on Aladdin, and I have these posters that are above it blocking me uh, because the set of coordinates of all these multiple elements are kind of colliding with each other. And that would also create problems where uh, you might now have duplicate uh, names of, of elements and stuff like that. So um, how we solve this is uh, by filtering the source tree to only what is displayed. And so here I have this caps. Uh, now the new default state is that uh, we would only show the source tree of the displayed element. And if you want the full source tree, you would toggle this button. Well, if I start it again and I go to the same page, you'll see that now we can actually click on the title of the, of the app. So now I can select it. And this source becomes a lot simpler and a lot easier for developers, for test developers to, to write their test scripts. So this is pretty much the end of my uh, presentation. So the key takeaway from this is that Appium is easily extendable. There's a good community that can help you uh, if you want to try something new or, uh, yeah. That's pretty much it. Thank you. Hello. Hey. Uh, I'm not really want to ask about the UE. But uh, regarding the IPM desktop, um, is there uh, also possible if we run the app from the Xcode 
and we directly attach the process to the app on desktop without relaunching the app like you did uh just so like yeah what's what okay what's the difference between what i did and what you're asking you so want me to launch the app through appium instead of me manually launching it so uh you're launching the app and not restarting the app from the appium desktop right yes like uh so i use this this uh platform name called connect to app and what that does is it launches our driver uh, uh so it skips the installation process and it just connects to uh the app so it it does exactly the same thing it would do without the installation part yeah that's what i mean uh with our solution uh, no no yeah i don't know okay thank you <laughs> is that a specific but capabilities here really okay Okay, great. Because sometimes I found uh, it crashed only we uh, executed in the Appium desktop. So, okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's really cool, Simon. Obviously, I've seen a little bit of this before, but I haven't seen all your demos, and I liked them a lot. Um, I guess I'm curious, how much for implementing all of this stuff, how much of the work would you say was on the engine side versus the Appium driver side in the in the Node.js world? Is it like 90-10 or 50-50 or what? Good question. Uh, definitely more on the engine side because we started from scratch with no automation layer. Uh, maybe 70, 30? Okay. Maybe, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I was just curious. Uh, hi. So, my doubt is that um, the keystroke commands that you just sent, right? Yeah. Um, so when you say you do um, other C platforms as well, so what about the commands in a TV remote that you generally have? Like there are so many keystrokes, right? Yes. So do you handle all of it or just the so basic ones? So that's something on our uh, to-do list. Okay. But interestingly, I've been talking to a few people and I think I have a few options to, to create that solution. Uh, so I don't know if any of you were at the other uh, uh, TV app presentation, HDDB or something. But I, he was using keys uh, from the web driver. So that's something I'll, I'll investigate to see if I can use the same thing. And it seems you can define uh, any keys in there. If not, I, um, Kazu, the one who was presenting just before, he did, uh, um, he added support for tvOS, and for that he used another set of commands uh, uh, to be able to send the keys. Uh, and he was able to send menu in another. So, so if he can do it with tvOS, definitely we can do it. Thank you. Hi. My name is Suresh. Like, I would like to know, like, how do you make sure different versions of Android and different versions of iOS and different other platforms are uh, supported well with this UI engine? For example, let's say we have uh, uh, Android KitKat version, like, and mm -hmm. that supports a certain set of APIs. Yep. How does the engine make sure that it works well with the latest APIs provided by the vendor? So when we build our apps, we always try to build it for a few versions below. 
so that it supports obviously the, the older version. Uh, but uh, when a new version comes out, we go and test it out and see if there's something that changed. Like now, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, Apple just announced uh, iPadOS. So definitely that'll make a change for us in our build scripts and everything. Uh, we'll have to adapt to it. Yeah. And you said like it's going to be a one engine for all different types of platform, right? Sorry? It's going to be one engine yeah. that's going to work using the universal socket for all the different types of a device, right? Yeah. So when, let's say like iOS is coming with, uh, with a new platform, so you're going to change something with this engine and that's going to be working for all the others as well. Like how do you test like if something is changed in one platform, you're going to make changes in your UI engine and make sure so that... So in the UI engine, we have all these hooks for the platform. So we kind of do all the abstraction for you. So okay. the developer doesn't have to care about the platform. But when we port our engine to a platform, we, we do some work definitely to, to, to create all the hooks to, to that platform. One more question. As an APM user, like, what is the learning curve I need to have in order to use this? To use APM or to use our version of APM? Or? To use UI engine. UI. Well, so it, it's all the same web driver commands. Uh, except we have some custom one, like for the key navigation uh, and such, but uh, theoretically it should should be very short learning curve. Uh, we actually have customers who knew Appium before started using this and they, they jumped right in. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, one more last question. How can we extend in, in case like we want to support some custom APIs? Like what is the language we have to start with suppose if we face some issues let's say in apm we find issues like we would go and contribute in apm source code where we make changes so in this case when we face issues like do we have to work with ui engine team or yes and the custom api suppose if it is something that only we would like to have how does it go like it's like we make a request to you you support it or we implement ourselves something like a plugin or an add-on I think it would be a discussion, but yeah, usually the customers will ask us to do it oh. for them. Yes. We had one customer actually make a contribution to our driver when he found a typo somewhere. He just corrected. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, hi, I'm Amrit. So uh, you mentioned about the desired capabilities to automate the TVs or any other things, right? So you have any document to verify for uh, what and all the desired capabilities I have to uh, give for specific TV or any other uh, solution like what I have mentioned. I could see the Git, I mean the uh, Git code, there is a desired capabilities it is throwing for not for. I don't see any uh, documentation for that. I mean, uh, the usage basically. The, the usage, uh, okay, I, I, I missed the question. Either. Okay, so uh, in the Appium GUI, yeah. uh, we went and you showed some desired capabilities, what we have to mention if we are trying to automate uh, TV. Yeah. Maybe you told you have to give the IP of it. So maybe I can just show if I go to our um, GitHub repo. Yeah, here. Uh, so for I explain here for iOS, this is uh, the different capabilities you would define: okay. Android, Mac OS, uh, UI Mac, UI TV. Okay. So you're so, asking. Yeah, yeah. Some so, that are yeah, not yeah. In I, there. I was asking this. Okay. So, so for the ones that are not in there right now, you would use this connect to app okay. because the installer is missing. But uh, you could still run on the platforms using this. Uh, once we add the installers, mm -hmm. then it'll have its own platform name. Okay, cool. This is really much the universal entry point to our okay. to our automation layer. And then here, just to continue then, this is the list of the commands that we have and the version of the engine that starts supporting it. Uh, we have a list of attributes uh, here. Uh, we have uh, 
some settings. We actually, have, I didn't demo this, but we can do time dilation inside our app to, if we want to shrink the transitions between the different screens, I can actually go and, and, and say, I want the transition to be uh, five times faster and, and such. And okay, and just finish. So the, the selector strategy we support uh, so we have ID, uh, class name, and then accessibility ID. And then uh, if we do define a, a test ID in React Native, it'll actually override the ID. So when the ID search strategy starts searching, it search for the test ID first. If it can't find it, then it can search for ID. So we can take other questions offline. And demos are always fun. They lead to so many questions. But thank you, Saman. Great. Thank you.